Hello, welcome to Technology for Fun Home STEM Projects. I'm Caroline Alliston, a Mechanical Design Engineer. I'm also a STEM educator and author of the Technology for Fun books and teacher resources. This is what we're going to make today. It's a juice carton guitar. This is how it sounds. This is what you'll need. Three juice cartons, about seven centimetres square, with a sticking up top like this. And six thin rubber bands, about 12 centimetres long or longer, and about one to two millimetres wide. You'll also need nail scissors, large scissors, sellotape, a ruler and a ballpoint pen. Step one is to select the body of the guitar. Choose the juice carton in the best condition. These ones have small dents in. Step two is to make the bottom of the guitar. Take a second juice carton. Use the nail scissors to cut off the bottom of the carton. You can ask an adult to help you pierce the carton. Use the large scissors to cut off the side opposite the spout by cutting below the fold line. Neaten up the bottom and sides. Slide this onto the first juice carton and tape in position. The two spouts should be on the same side. Step three is to make a fit the bridge. Take the third juice carton, cut off the top with nail scissors, cut around the spout and remove these flaps. Then neaten up with the large scissors. Mark one centimetre intervals across the bridge and cut short Vs to locate the rubber bands. Tape the bridge to one end of the guitar body on the opposite side to the spouts. Step four is to make a fit the nut. Cut a strip about 10 millimeters wide all the way around the remains of the third juice cart. Mark and trim it to 3mm wide.
Fold up the strip and tape it together. Then tape the strip by its ends to the crease at the opposite end to the bridge of the guitar. Step five is to cut the anchors. So you're gonna mark one centimeter intervals across the top and bottom of the guitar. Cut slits about six millimeters long at each position. These are to anchor the strings. Step six is to fit the strings. Cut a rubber band, stretch one end through the slot at the bottom of the guitar, place it over the matching V in the bridge, then stretch the other end through the slot in the top of the guitar. Repeat for all the strings. If you have different thicknesses of rubber bands, then fit thicker ones on the right hand side and thinner ones on the left hand side. Step seven is to tune the guitar. Pluck the strings to see how they sound. Try adjusting the amount of stretch in each string to obtain a sequence of sounds from high to low. The more you stretch the string, the higher the pitch. See if you can play a simple tune. What else can you do? You could try plucking the strings harder or more gently to find out how this affects the loudness of the sound. You can watch the strings vibrate to see if a bigger vibration in the string corresponds to a louder sound. You can feel how much the body of the guitar vibrates. Does it vibrate more when the guitar makes a louder sound? You can also make a plectrum out of some of the offcuts to pluck the guitar with. Do you need extra notes to play the tunes you'd like to play? You can make frets. Cut a strip halfway around the leftover juice carton. Trim it neatly to two millimeters wide. Bend it in two and tape it together. Then tape it onto the guitar below, below the nut. In order to play the extra note, you need to press down on the fret before plucking the string. You may need to adjust the position to get the right sound. Now my son, who is a physics student, is going to tell you about the science behind the project. When you pluck a string, it vibrates. This pushes the particles around the string, causing them to vibrate. These then push the particles next to them, making them vibrate, and so on. The vibrations are then transmitted through the air to your ear as a sound wave. Inside the ear, there's a sensitive membrane called the eardrum, which picks up the vibrations, converts them into electrical signals. The air then sends the signals to your brain, which interprets them then as sound.
the sound travels through the air as a wave. This can be demonstrated using a slinky. What you're going to see here is a longitudinal or compression wave, where the particles move backwards and forwards in line with the movement of the wave. This is how the particles move when sound travels through the air. You can also get transverse waves, where the particles move perpendicular, that is to say at right angles, to the direction of motion of the wave. This is more like ripples you'd see if you throw a stone into a pond, or how light travels. If you pluck the string harder, then the air particles move more, so you hear a louder sound. Here I'm going to pluck the string lightly, and here more heavily. Hopefully you can hear the difference. The body of the guitar also vibrates, which makes more air particles move, amplifying the sound. When you pull a string tighter, it will be put under more tension, meaning waves will travel along it faster. This then in turn means that it will vibrate with a high frequency. When you pluck the string, you move it from its resting position, then when you let go it's pulled back. Putting the string under more tension will mean it will be pulled back harder, so it moves more quickly, thus making a higher pitch sound. Here I'm going to increase the tension in the string, and we will hear an increase in pitch. Normally, the vibrating length of the string is from the nut to the bridge. You can also make a higher pitch sound by introducing a fret. When the string is held in position at one end by the fret, the vibrating length of the string is shorter. The shorter length of the string gives rise to a higher pitch sound. Thank you for watching. This project is taken from my STEM activity cards. For more ideas, you can visit my Technology for Fun website.